Let's try to better understand compute at. So we are going to look at a little two-stage blur, starting with uh, blur x, which simply computes the average of the three neighbors, and followed by blur y, which computes the average of the three neighbors, but in the vertical direction. All right? And we're going to study a very simple schedule that starts with tiling blur y, uh, followed by the very advanced compute at, which will be done at the level x0 of blur y. All right. And remember that with halide, we always start by specifying the schedule of the consumer before specifying that of the producer. And as usual with halide, it's all about figuring out the appropriate set of nested loops that will generate the right code. So we're going to start with our consumer, or we start with your consumer, and we're going to generate the loops corresponding to the tiling. Blur Y, the consumer, is going to be computed in tiles. So let me draw the tiles here. And then we have the little pixels inside a, a tile. So with tiling, we generate uh, a for loop for YO. Then inside, we have a for loop for XO. So these are the tile indices. And now we need to generate the loops uh, for the inside of a tile. And so we are going to have a for YI and a for XI. So, so far, this is all about blur y. Now we need to take care of blur x. And we see that blur x is scheduled as compute at the level xo of blur y. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out where to insert the creation of blur x data in the nested loop hierarchy of blur y. And here, we have to put it at the level XO right here. So let's make a little bit of space uh, so that we can uh, put the code for the generation of Blur X data. Here we go. And remember, uh, even though we specified the consumer first, we still need to produce the producer data before we can move on to consume them. So at this level of the loop nest, we are about to compute blur y, the consumer, for a full tile. So now the big question we have is how much of blur x do we need in order to be able to do this? And of course, uh, we need uh, data from blur x for the full tile, but uh, because blur y has a vertical extent, we need a little more. And precisely, we need two more rows of pixels. Here there are two more rows. And this is it. Once we have produced all these blur x data, we'll be able to compute blur y for the full tile. And so now uh, things are simple. I've decided that I need this rectangle of blur x. And all I need to do is to insert uh, loops uh, that generate this data. And because nothing else is specified for blur x, uh, we just use the default scheduling, which is for y for x. And so I'm going to use a for y2, just so that we don't confuse the variables, followed by for x2. And then we can just use the, the formula for blur x. And this is it. So in summary, uh, we've done two important things with compute at. The first thing we had to do was to figure out where uh, to insert the producer in the loop nest of the consumer. And the second thing we had to do was to figure out how much of the producer data is needed by the consumer and generate the appropriate loops that create the data for the corresponding rectangle.